This is Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM. I'm Tom Tool. She's Stacey Mitchell. She's Sarah Time. And we have special guest Anthony Capadano here from our team. We're going to talk about him soon. And we have Nick Wolf behind the camera. And we all work at the Tom Tool Sales Group at REMAX Mainline, the number one REMAX team in Pennsylvania since 2018. And if you get some value out of the show, we're going to talk about biggest stories of 2023, real estate and non-real estate related. 2024 market predictions and we're going to talk about one of our killer agents anthony how he is he's the accelerator excellence award winner at our holiday party because he's been kicking so much butt very cool so if you get some value out of this you like what you hear subscribe to the youtube channel click the bell for notifications and we'll be coming back every single tuesday at three o'clock so ladies biggest stories of 2023 we're going to start with that we're going to change it up a little bit here who wants to go first? Sure. So my biggest story was Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. I love it. <laughs> so te- why, why is that? Tell us more about that. I mean, t- elaborate. I mean, I think some of us know who Travis Kelsey is. Most people should know who Taylor Swift is. Yeah. I mean, I think that she, well, she had a great, I mean, she's had a great decade, but um, it was, you know, a lot of her stuff is all like, you know, heartbreak and you know, it was nice. It was like a feel good story, kind of like seeing them come together. And it just kind of like dominated my Instagram because, you know, once you like click on something once, then that's all you're getting. So I've also had it in my face a lot, but I don't mind. I like it. Did you like it? Did you like it? Is that why you keep getting them back on your screen? Um, possibly. Or I think I just like viewed it. And then once you like view things, I don't I don't know how it all goes in. But... Um, but like yes but not like a crazy like i like her i like her songs i've always like liked her songs but i'm not i've been to like one concert like many years ago did so. it compel you to buy a jersey a kelsey jersey no that would that would be a foul i would i would, I would have a problem with that well, well i would get a i would maybe do a jason one oh, okay. but now but although i do think that's one even if he does retire this year i feel like that's a jersey he's been with the team for so long that you could continue to wear even after he's like off so it would still be a good investment um, but maybe a Kelsey, maybe a, I also love their new Heights podcast. So it's just fun seeing it from all angles. That is a great podcast. I think that's a really good one. Um, so do you think like Christmas dinner? Well, actually, no, the Eagles played on Christmas, so this wouldn't have happened. But do you think like Thanksgiving, like Jason's there and like Taylor Swift's there and like they're all, they're all hanging out. Does this how this goes? Like, how, how, do you guys think this actually happens like that? I hope so. I don't think so. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it. it's like a different world, the Hollywood thing. You know, I just think it's just out of our imagination. But I feel like the Kelseys are kind of just like family oriented and that like Taylor would come and like get in on that. I think the Kelseys are more down to earth. Yeah. You know, I think Taylor's been in the industry for a long time now. Yeah. Because I think she's a little bit more different. Yeah. Like she used to be down home or, you know, from yeah. what, outside of Reading. And kind of like a normal person, and then went to Nashville. But, um, but being in in the industry that long, right. and she you're, like whole, yeah, and being at the that level that she is, yeah. she's on a whole different stratosphere. So she probably has a lot of security detail, yeah. where the Kelseys don't. Right. You know. Well, I mean, I think when uh, Jason was first like here, and like he would get like recognized a little bit, but I think he would just like be able to go out to bars in Philly, and I don't know that he'd be able to do that right now. His, his first date with his wife, they were at a bar. Um, they met on Tinder, and uh, then he he fell asleep at the bar. If you watch the Kelsey documentary, this is what happened. I mean, he you know Jason's interesting because he goes to the OD all the time in Sea Isle. Um, I mean, he he didn't have any security. Like he just he's just kind of hanging out. Um, and he's building that large estate in Haverford right now. I don't know if you guys saw this. This to me is actually pretty big news. So um, he lives in Haverford right now, but then he uh, bought an adjacent site with eight acres. And it's going to be like this, like huge estate. So I mean, you know, it's it's. I mean, he's he's a Philadelphia celebrity, but I don't think most people know who Jason Kelsey is unless you're a football fan. People might not recognize him out. Also, you know, when you see people out, it's different than when you see him on TV. Yeah, absolutely. He's got the beard. He just blends in. He doesn't dress up. He's not flashy. Yeah, he's just uh, he's just wears his t-shirt, sweatshirt, and just goes out. Yeah. So building that big estate, do you think he's like here to stay for the most part? Well, I mean, I, I think he might retire soon is the reality. I mean, if you watch the documentary, um, and I, I actually find this a very interesting story, Sarah, because I think Jason is blown up more than Travis. Believe, I mean, yeah, that, that documentary, you guys got a chance to watch it. I thought it was pretty cool. His wife's from around here, too. His wife's from uh, Narberth. I think she was a teacher in um, at Penn Valley, believe it or not. So 
Um, they're they're I'm pretty clear they're staying. And I just wonder, like, I can't imagine, like, like you're sitting around, like, I mean, if you have like a serious girlfriend, you're probably bringing her to the holidays, right? But I don't know. Maybe I mean, maybe maybe he's not showing up. Travis might be me out on that one. There's rumors that it was all kind of like PR anyway. So we'll have to find out. We'll have to see what happens. And that he was just going to become her next album. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't That's know. interesting. Well, I am. I'm glad that Jason is doing that here because like, wasn't there also talk he was maybe for his like post uh, football career going to get into raising some cows? I don't know. He's he's up to a lot of stuff. I Southern mean, Chester County. <laughs> yeah. I think he was looking at like places out in like Montana or like. I did hear that. Yeah, I think he was. T- I mean, you know, he, the guy. He and he has his Christmas albums. I mean, it's very interesting. I mean, he's. I, I don't he's think he's moving singer. anytime like, too. A lot of the Eagles were like players. I thought had great voices. I was like, my God, you guys are talented. Yeah, it was very good. Jordan Mailata was yeah, the star Mylotta. of the show. Yeah. So Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, big story for Sarah time, and I can see that. I think it makes sense. Stace, what about you? What do you got? Chat GPT. So. What is ChatGPT if you're living under a rock? Okay, so it's AI, artificial intelligence. So basically, it's an app and a website. You can sign up, and if you need help, especially for real estate agents, if you're not using it, you might want to jump on board. Um, If you don't know how to word an email, maybe you're trying to put together an email, introduction email, or a difficult email, or just a text message, you can just plug in what you know the backbone of what you're trying to convey and it will spit out all kinds of language that you can use and then you can craft it to your own your own speech pattern or the way you would word something but it's been um it's been very helpful what do you use it for like like anyone who's using it regularly here i use it almost every day but I'm, i'm curious what you guys are doing Oh, my gosh. I mean, you can use it to put together business plans for the next year if you want to. Like, You can put goals in and, and it'll generate a business plan for you. I mean, you could pretty much it's endless what you can do with it. So just say you want to do an introduction email or you want to approach another agent about, I don't know, something, a, a, a listing or maybe you're working with another agent and you want to try to put together an email uh, pertaining to an issue or a problem. And it just helps you build the backbone of, of your email, and then you can customize it the way that you would, yeah. you know, the way that you would speak. But you could do it for listing descriptions. I mean, there's, it's, yeah. pretty, it's pretty endless what you can use it for. And the more you use it, the more you'll want to use it. Uh, you got to use the right prompts. So we had a client, I'm not going to go into details here, and they, they didn't like the listing write-up, and they were giving everyone a hard time. And I said, okay. And I put in, as the best copywriter in the world, rewrite this. And we sent it to them, and they're like, wow, this person should write my obituary. It's that good. Literally, this is what they said. So this, this is, and it took no time. But I, I'm clear, people that don't leverage this technology, they're going to be, how, has anyone here actually written a listing description before? It is horrible. It takes so much time. Can ask Valerie about it. I mean, and, and it basically says the same stuff for the most part. You want to highlight certain things for sure. So th- this is where you can, work smarter and harder and I, I think it's it's anyone not just real estate agents but any business owner should be leveraging AI mm-hmm. and there's an AI app oh let me see if I can find it um, and a website too that you can generate um, pictures so you can generate AI pictures so you would put the prompt in what you want to use like okay blonde female model um, walking on the beach or blonde female model real estate agent opening a door and it'll generate a picture so you can utilize it for marketing or whatever, you know. Is it deep AI? Is that what it's called? Yeah, I haven't used, I haven't gone into depth uh, with it that much. So create an image from a text prompt. So we're gonna say, um, reimagine Jerome Powell as the Grinch. There you go. Perfect. Let's see what comes up here. That's awesome. Eight. Uh, we'll do standard because we don't have the paid version here. Let's see what happens. So I, I I do agree with you on ChatGPT. Are you guys using this at all? What do you what do you use for it? Uh, social media media posts like just just you know just of like a like the reviews that I've been getting, um, you know, blasting it out and uh, you know certain emails. Obviously, uh, I I use the base of of the uh, ChatGPT and then put it in my kind of wording. 
or certain texts or emails or stuff like that. I do agree you got to edit it afterwards. I think that's a mistake a lot of people don't because it, it kind of sounds like AI. Like it, it, it definitely sounds like that. So what about you? What, what are you using, Sarah? The occasional text. Um, How do you use it for texting? Just like if there was, if there's like something you're trying to get a point like across to your client or whatnot, just kind of like put in what you're trying to say and then make sure it, uh, cause I feel like I'm one that like second guesses as I like write something. I'm like, all right, wait, does this, does that sound weird? Da, da, da. So just like getting another like set of eyes on it, I guess. I like it. No, I think that's good. All right. So this actually works pretty well. Can I see your pictures? Because mine didn't come out. I put Jerome Powell as Grinch. Oh, that's ah. really good. And I have characters that aren't even close to Jerome Powell that popped up on mine. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, th th this is the, you. Got, I think you got to be careful which one you use because, like, I mean, there's a million ChatGPT ripoffs, but ChatGPT, there's their Bard that Google has, but that one's the connected to the internet. Um, I actually paid for the upgraded version with ChatGPT because you get the uh, it connects to the internet. You can upload files and cross check stuff that way, so that's pretty good. Um, I mean, I, I just think this is something that if you're not using it regularly, you're just you're, you're wasting time doing stuff that could be done another way. So um, it's definitely a big story. Um, did it come out this year? I feel like it's been around a little longer. I think it came out early this year. It was or early 2023. this year, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, early 2023. 2023. So, but I feel it's been a long year. So what, what can it's I say? It's definitely been a, a long year for sure. <laughs> Anthony, you got any stories here? You got anything you want to share? Biggest story of 2023. We're putting them on the spot. We've given Anthony zero prep time for this show, so. Nah, I mean, you know, the Taylor Swift one that comes comes to mind. You see it on every single news channel. Sarah is feeling so good about her choice right now. She hit the nail on the head on that one, absolutely. Uh, you know, you know, the Kelsey brothers, that's the biggest story. Uh, and, I, and I think they relate because of the, their, to everybody in, in the public is because they, they they're just like normal dudes. You know, obviously Travis is a little different than Jason. But they they have a great relationship. They have a great family. Um, and then, you know, like him and, and Jason, him and his wife meeting on, on Tinder, where I have a cl uh, my clients met that I just picked up a couple months ago. They met on Tinder. And, the, and the, like, that's a, they're always bringing up the, the, uh, the, the um, Tinder app and all that stuff. So, and, uh, and the they're Kelsey. still on Tinder after they met. That's, that's, uh... And I was like, I thought Tinder, and I'm out of the game. I've been out of the dating game for many years. Many years, but like I thought Tinder was like a hookup thing, but you know it's not. So, uh, you know, I learned. You know. I don't think it is now. Might be the way to look at. It. I don't know. I, I I never. I don't think any of us were in that. that we've all been committed and committed relationships for a very long time, so I couldn't speak to that one. All right, so here's what I got. Mine's a little more real estate related. I guess I'm the boring person, uh, and I, I the biggest story to me is how volatile the year was when it came to. Rates going up and down. I've never seen anything like this where it was like a daily basis. You were predicting, like, are the rates going to be higher? Are they going to be lower? Should we lock in now? Combined with the uncertainty and the def, uh, the plaintiffs winning the commission lawsuit. I mean, that that was really shocking to me. And, and you know, I look at it that NAR really got beat in that. They didn't they didn't lose. Well, they lost. But the, the, the plaintiffs didn't win. NAR got beat. Because they didn't hire the right attorneys. They had a bad defense. We've talked about this on the show a lot. I don't know how you have the agents that actually listed the homes of the plaintiffs not come on and testify in that. I mean, maybe they didn't want to. I don't know. But it, the, the way that went, and you're hearing people say, oh, I thought this was fair. I was really happy with the result. Like, it, it didn't make sense to what the, what, and that's what happens when you get in front of a jury. Because their attorneys for the plaintiffs did a better job than the attorneys for the defendants. And the fact that this is still going on. You know, I remember when NAR said, don't worry about this. It's just a bunch of noise. And that was in 2019. Well, guess what? They were wrong. Um, and I still hear, because we're doing something in our office here at the end of the month about the best practices in the commission lawsuit era. And we've already done, like, we've worked on the scripts and the dialogues and all that. I've gotten so many messages from folks that said their managers think it's just a bunch of noise. Or their leaders at, at whatever organization where they're with don't think anything's going to change. Now, nothing's changed yet. I don't see... I don't see this being a stagnant thing. Like this is that you could see the number of agents drop. There's a lot to come out of this, and the fact that the plaintiffs won to me, that's got to be the biggest real estate story, at least, of 2023. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, the commission lawsuit definitely big story. Yeah, biggest story. I mean, it's it's getting brought up. You know, people are bringing it up. Clients are you know people I'm meeting and stuff like that. They're bringing it up. It happened to us the day after it happened, Anthony. We were on an appointment, like literally, like the next day. So. Did that come up on any of your appointments so far? 
It hasn't come up on any of my appointments. I've had clients ask about it. Okay. Uh, so I think that for agents out there, knowing how to answer those questions is a, is a must. Like you have to know how to respond to that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I've had very few uh, clients have brought it up, um, but it has it has come up. And in one instance, very early on, like I think like the news had just broke and probably like the next day I was talking to my client and he like he brought it up and, you know, he had been following it. Um, but I would say one like an everyday basis or for like a majority of people that I'm talking to, it's not something that they've brought up. You know, one thing that has been fortunate is that it hasn't gotten in the public eye too much after the initial ruling. Um, and I, I think that that's a good thing because nothing's changed yet and it's going to confuse people. I mean, imagine if there's like, I mean, there's been some slight changes, but the consumers really are just, it, and it really just shows you got to focus on what's important to them, not what the laws say. And, and not, not that you shouldn't focus on that. I want to be very clear. Consumers can care about getting into a house and they care about selling their home. And that seems to be their biggest, I don't, I don't see that changing. And if you focus on that, you're probably going to win as a real estate agent long term. So I pulled up an article while we're here. This is on N. Sarah is a big NPR listener. I was just going to say when M I have heard it on NPR. Like oh, I was talking about the biggest stories on NPR, um, and that was not one of them. But I pulled up NPR's biggest stories, most popular stories of 2023. Tell me if you think I, some of the stuff I didn't even know about. Number one. There's no whiskey in bottles of Fireball Cinnamon, so customers are suing for fraud. This happened in January. Is that why you can buy it at, like, gas stations? Is it? I don't know. I don't drink Fireball, um, so I wouldn't know. Because I feel like you can buy at gas stations, random gas stations. They'll have Fireball, and they'll have, like, Malibu or, like, Parrot Bay. Yeah. And it's like, why? So is it a mixer? Like, it's a, it's, a, it's a liqueur made with a mix of Canadian whiskey sweeteners and natural cinnamon flavoring, but it's not a whiskey. Once you add sugar to a spirit and lower its ABV, it becomes a liqueur rather than a spirit. So they market it as a whiskey. Okay. So it's kind of like false advertising. Top story, according to NPR. Holy cow. I People know. are obsessed with Fireball. Like, I mean, I, like, I mean I'm, I'm, I don't, do you guys drink this stuff? I don't. I, I don't, right? I feel like back in, like, college, it was like a... Big, I have, I mean, big item, uh, you know, a shot or, you know, a shot or two here and there and stuff like that, because that's usually the go to thing. And it's and it goes down kind of easy. Interesting. All right. Here's some other ones. Um, there was a baby bison that was euthanized after being handled by a Yellowstone guest and was rejected by the herd. I did hear about that. I mean, that's a big deal. I mean, first of all, if you watch Yellowstone, you see how protected those animals are in the park. Like, it's, they all have, like, collars on and all sorts of stuff. So, yes. What happened to the person that handled it? I don't know. It was a visitor from Hawaii. Let's look, go deeper here. People are, you know, it just, it's so frustrating. And you, you see a lot, you know, that you go to these parks, there's visitors okay, that so go. Okay, so he pled guilty and was fined. Um... He should have had to raise the bison. Now you are his. Now you are his mother. I don't know if they would be that smart. <laughs> All right, the fine was only a thousand dollars. Ugh. But these people, they go out and like they'll cross barriers to take selfies, and then they fall down and get hurt, or or some. You know, you see the ones where they fall off the cliff and die. Yeah. But people are just um, so self-absorbed, and it, it just is fascinating to me that they there's there's not a lot of self-restraint anymore. Right. There isn't. Like, people can't restrain themselves. Right. It's like, don't touch the wildlife, right. <laughs> you know? And they would be the first ones, say that, you know, they were trying to go pet a bear, right. and they got clawed to death. Right. They would be the first ones to sue, or, right. some, you know, and it's like, you're the idiot that did that. Right. Right. <laughs> it's like saying a do not, do not uh, trespass sign, and then, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you trespass, and then, or get hurt and sue, and sue. And then, like, the, their signs. But you were trespassing. Here, here's what else is on here. I don't, I don't. I think our stories are better than this. Um, so, Tucker Carlson was ousted at Fox News after a seven hundred eighty-seven million dollars settlement. Um, that, that's a lot of money. More money than Shohei Otani got in his latest contract, and that was the biggest baseball contract in history. Um, 
I, I don't. I think it's one we're going to pass on getting into. Would be my advice here. Um, you know, the, it's on Fox News, so who knows? I mean, that's and any any of these news anchors, they're either there's no like in one in the middle anymore. It's either one side or the other. Um, what else do we got? There was uh, the U.S. recovered non-human biologics from UFO crash sites. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't know any of this stuff happened. Well, they had a big announcement that we had that there's aliens, right? And do nobody you guys even it? Do you knew. Guys think so? Do you guys think there was aliens? Did I miss the announcement? I you mean, totally, I, I, I must totally, everybody be... missed the announcement. Like, everybody, it just, they had a big congressional hearing about this, yeah. where they brought in these little alien bodies, mummified alien bodies and stuff, and they had people testifying, and like, nobody, there was nothing else on the news, like, nobody even cares. Like, life just went on. I just, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, for ye- forever, we've been talking about I don't know. When we were younger, fascinated with aliens and like, is there life up there? And, you know, yeah. and it's always been suppressed and kept secrets. And like right. the, the government could never, yeah, yeah. The government can never reveal any of this information. All of a sudden in 2023, they decide to let the floodgates open. And, and then nobody even paid attention. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's in, it says a lot about uh, this would be a good time to break because it says a lot about, hey, number one story, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. Well, and then, and Anthony's right there. He's like, yeah, that was a big story. And then, meanwhile, aliens exist, and I'm finding out about it now when I Google top stories of 2023 on an NPR article. So, interesting time. So, let's take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about 2024 market predictions and then get into everything we want to share about our good friend, killer real estate agent, Anthony Capadano. For the best local mortgage service and great rates on your money, look no further than Mortgage America. We've been operating in the greater Philadelphia area for 40 years with a focus on smooth, easy access to home purchasing. Whether you're a first-time buyer, upsizing or downsizing, or just refinancing, we have programs for you. We also have closing cost assistance programs and access to subsidized interest rates. Pre-approval is free, no costs or commitments. To learn more, visit our website at mymortgageamerica.com or give us a call at 610-439-8000. We always have a person available to take your call with around-the-clock human service. Purchase your home with the personalized local service you find at Mortgage America. Mortgage America is an equal housing lender. NMLS 128501. When you're getting a mortgage, you shouldn't have to sacrifice great service just to get a great rate. At Mortgage America, we've been lending with this philosophy for over 35 years. We have access to great low rates without the complications and delays of big or online banks. We're a local Pennsylvania lender with loan officers that you can actually meet. As PHFA's number one lender, we specialize in all residential mortgage programs, including first-time buyer programs and low down payment options. For your free pre-approval, call us at 610-439-8000 or apply online at mymortgageamerica.com. The Tom Tool Sales Group is the number one REMAX team in Pennsylvania with over $165 million in volume for 2021. I'm Tom Tool, and our team has achieved that kind of success by being a great place to work with and to work for. No one knows Greater Philly better than we do. We know real estate, but more importantly, we're real people. We hire the best agents, and we give them all the tools to succeed. Even our brand new agents sell 17 to 24 homes a year because our team delivers the best experience in real estate. Teams deliver a better experience than individuals, and we're a top 1% real estate team in the country. We call it AAA service. We're your advocate, ally, and advisor. Because this isn't a transaction to us. It's a relationship. If you're buying or selling a home, call the Tom Tool Sales Group at REMAX main line at 610-692-6976 or visit TomTool.com. That's Tom, Tool with an E, dot com. Sell your home for more and remember the real estate golden rule. You always get more when you work with Tom Tool. Have you considered a career in real estate? Do you want control over your income? Whether you have a license or not, call us today at 610-692-6976 or visit TomTool.com. Join our team, the Tom Tool Sales Group at REMAX Mainline. Welcome back to Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM. I'm Tom Tool. She's Stacey Mitchell. She's Sarah Time. And we've got Anthony Capadano here from our team as well and Nick Wolf behind the camera, and we all work at the Tom Tool Sales Group at REMAX Mainline, the number one REMAX team in Pennsylvania since 2018. And if you get some value out of our market predictions, which we're going to give you next, some stuff will surprise you here, as well as how we highlight our Killer Agent Accelerator Excellence Award winner. He's got a little Buffalo trophy in his office, uh, Anthony Capadano. Just make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. So 
2024 market predictions. How long are people usually with these predictions? I feel like they get revised frequently throughout the year. Experts are revisers. That's that's a great great way to look at it. Very cool. That's a good way. That's that's a really good observation. I you know I, I don't know that they're always so long, but you see some. Pe- it seems like the people that are on like the the, the high or the low. There's always like a range, right? Because we deal with numbers. The people that are on the high, they always bring them down. The people on the low always bring them up. So I, I kind of look at where they're trending in the middle. I think that's the best way to look at these things here. Sarah, you wanted to lead it off. You got some predictions for next year. Tell us what you see happening in the housing market. Well, I mean, we've been hitting one every week, and it's in the news constantly about interest rates. So I think that they are certainly going to be a factor in the 2024 market. Um, I know right now we're low sixes, which is awesome. Um, so I think that we're going to kind of hover right around this range for the next couple months. Um, you know, the feds have hinted that they're going to be doing several uh, drops next year, which I think will impact things, potentially gets us into uh, mid to more than likely upper fives for, for a bit there. But I think we're at least six months away from that. Um, but I think as, uh, as the interest rates come down, more buyers come back in, competition increases, price of home goes up. So you're ultimately, if you're going to break it down into monthly payments, you may, for the same house, have a very similar monthly payment um, Mm -hmm. with the interest rates being in the low sixes, um, getting it at, um, you know, for X amount versus, you know, maybe you get that lower interest rate six months down the road here. But for when you like uh, put in the additional amount you're going to have to spend on the purchase price, I think your monthly payments are going to be pretty similar. Um, and then my other prediction is just that we're going to have, you know, a nice stable appreciation throughout the year of somewhere between like three and 5%. Yeah. You know, I, I like both of these predictions one, because they're well thought out and I think that they're, they're very value based. And secondly, the fed's going to cut the rates. Like they said, we're going to do it three times. So those rate cuts, I don't see them happening in the, maybe, maybe the, like the end of the second quarter. Um, I, I think we're going to have a lot of wait and see at the February meeting and the meetings that come uh, subsequently after that. So I do agree with you. It's going to be later in the year. I also, I don't, I, these people that say prices are going to go down, I mean, maybe it's certain markets for sure. It, it's not happening where we are here. It's not happening nationally because there's no inventory and there, the demand is still too strong. So very strong predictions. I like both of them. I, I, would, be, I would be buying both those predictions, Sarah. So really good stuff. What do you guys want to add here? What do you think about Sarah's predictions? Well, I agree 100% <laughs> on the interest rates. Um, it's it's very exciting. And I also think, um, to piggyback off of that, I think Q1 is going to be really busy for buyers, for buyers out there. I think that the market is going to be bi- more busy than anticipated mm-hmm. by some agents. Um, so I think some people are going to be uh, caught off guard. But I think that uh, already I'm talking to people about it. They didn't know that the interest rates were in the low sixes. And it's it's like totally, you know, uh, intrigued them. And, and their interest now um, is sparked into first quarter next year. S- and already this past week, I've gotten two calls out of the blue, one from a new buyer that's been a re- that was a referral and another uh, for a listing appointment. So to me, they're calling me the week of the holiday. You know what I mean? So people are thinking ahead into uh, the first quarter of next year. So I think it's going to be busier than what most agents anticipate. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the first quarter. I mean, I think we're going to see, you know, I mean, I think the rates are going to pretty, they're going to stay steady. And then, um, you know, things I don't have experience with, Tom, that you've been, a, you've, been lo- you've been in the business longer than all of us right here. Making me feel old. Thank you. No, well, kidding. I'm old in here, so it doesn't matter. All right, there we go. <laughs> but but uh, no, no uh, historically, historically, election, election year. So, so now, now we're coming up to election, election year. year. What, do you, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think? Of, what do you think about that? This is, this is actually a great question. I'm, I'm, um, so what I know is this is going to be a hotly contested election. People tend to lose their minds lately during elections. I mean, the past, the past two in particular, there's been a lot of just everyone's amped up. And, you know, I, I don't know if you guys ever watched South Park, but they had the election episode where it's like you got one choice or the other, and they had some very colorful names for them. I don't know if I can say this on the radio. That's kind of how I feel about the elections personally, because I'd love to get some better candidates in there. It doesn't look like that's really going to be the case, uh, and I, I, I don't, I'm pretty clear that's how the majority of people feel. Um, 
what it does is that it's another reason for people to wait. That's what an election really is. They're like, let's see what's going to happen. But here, here's the thing. These people aren't even in office until a year from now, in January of 2025. And then it takes six to 12 months for anything to get even close to remotely done in Washington on top of that. So really, the only thing I see happening with the election is you've got to communicate that to people because I don't see prices going down based on either of the front runners winning the election that's coming up. Um, so, but not a lot of agents, and we talk about scripting and like what to say and how to say it in the commission lawsuits. I, if you don't know what to say in those situations, that's where you get in a lot of trouble. So, um, I mean, especially leading up to the election, I think like that September on is when things get really like wild. I mean, we're in a very, uh, we're in a battleground state here. I mean, it's Pennsylvania's other state. I mean, the past two years has been, it wasn't like that for a long time, but the past two, not two years, two elections, it, a lot of people are looking at Pennsylvania as like one of the deciding factors. So I think that's going to be something else to think about. Uh, but I, I don't see it. It tells me the Fed's going to stay the course because the, the, the people in the White House, they want to stay there, right? So if they're going to stay there, they're not going to start doing things that are going to negatively affect the economy because that's, that's the biggest concern people have right now. Over 60% of voters are concerned about the economy. And that has to do with housing prices specifically. So I'm not very political one way or the other. I'm, I'm Mr. Purple. That's the thing I think you need to think about is like, let's look what these people are going to do. Because, I mean, politicians, they talk out of both sides of their mouth. So, mm hmm. Mm hmm. But I'm clear, too, Tom, that they, the economy, they want it to be in, in a much better position than it was for 2023. They don't want it to be uh, the focal point where people are talking yeah. about the inflation and the high gas and the high food prices and things like that. They would like the interest rates to come down, hence their announcement that they're going to make three or four decreases. And they want to keep the housing market um, going because they have to. It's what, 17% of the GDP? So if the housing market comes to a screeching halt um, or slows down tremendously, there's bigger problems because then everything slows down. Construction slows down. Yep. Uh, small business slows down in the sense of like your contractors. People will stop doing home improvements um, and only necessary repairs. So it affects the whole economy uh, as a whole. So I think. Um, the Fed definitely wants to show that it's working towards a better economy. Um, so I think that that's exactly what they're planning to do, do the uh, interest rate drops, and it's going to affect the housing market, I think, in a very positive way, which I'm 100% on board with that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's look at history, right? The last time the economy, I mean, because the economy was in pretty good shape leading into the last election. In 2008, it was not. And you saw both candidates come out. Remember they made that big deal about, like, oh, where are the econ I forget what they called the bill. It's like they always name it something like sounds like very patriotic and it's got a bunch of government pork in there. And, and it, But you saw John McCain and Barack Obama come out and they said, like, hey, we're like we're going to do this together. And it was very nonpartisan because they had to. So I, I, you're going to you don't get a lot of argument from one side or the other like that, that they want a bad economy. That's not like uh, I mean. If people are arguing against like a bad economy, like that's just that's silly. That doesn't that hurts so many people. So that's the thing that I, I think you're now the way they get there, obviously, is where people differ. But uh, that, that I look at history. I mean, that, the, they were very united then. And that was very unusual to see two candidates come out in the middle of an election. Like this was like the fall of I guess it was the fall of 2008. And it was it was the same thing. So. Mm -hmm. So what kind of predictions you got, Stace? Um, well, I'm I'm. My prediction is that the interest rates are going to drop. But I, I think that, um, as I stated before, that the Q1 uh, housing market is going to be booming. I, well, our local market yeah. is, is resilient. Our local market is amazing. And we still have people coming in from the big markets like New York and California, uh, New Jersey. So when people that come from those areas look around here and see what they can get for their money, they're like blown away. They think it's a discount, <laughs> you know, as opposed to other people thinking that yeah, well, it's unaffordable when they see it, taxes their taxes. Deal, yeah. And, and the beauty of our area. I mean, it's it's yeah. amazing what we have to offer here. We're, very fortunate, we, we're so blessed. And the school districts. I mean, I could go on and on and on about how our <laughs> how great our area is. But I think our area specifically is pretty resilient. So I don't think it's going to change much. I think the buyers are definitely going to come back. Um, because they missed out and they don't want to risk and take the chance that, you know, after the election, 
should something really go sideways and maybe interest rates go higher. Right. So I think the folks that were sitting on the bench for the past two years and watching the rates, they realized, oh, my gosh, now they're coming downward. Now's my time. Right. And I mean, I think there's always a reason not to do something. Right. But like at some point, it's like if this is what makes sense, like you just have to do it and know that no one here has a crystal ball and nobody can tell you with 100 percent certainty what is going to happen next. All we can tell you is like this is how things have trended over the last however many years. And, um, you know, kind of take that as it is. Um, if you're always like waiting for the next thing that might happen, you're never going to do anything. There's risk involved to everything. Right. You get in a car every day and there's a risk when you're getting on 202, <laughs> you know. That's a good way to look at it. So I tend to agree with you. I think I think that we're at an inflection point in the market. I mean, I've been even, even yesterday, um, our inside sales team, they set up seven appointments yesterday. So, I mean, there there's there's things happening. And then, and then it's like because it's around the holidays it's hard, and, and coming off, it's hard to get people to go run them, which is a whole nother thing. But uh, what I see, I'm, I'm in agreement with you, Stacey. I see it in an inflection point and NAR backs that up. And I'm, I'm, uh, this is actually one of my predictions. We're going to see more home sell next year because rates have come down and. You look at these predictions, and, and Sarah, we talked about like the range of the predictions. NAR is the most bullish. They're looking at a, like 4.71 million in home sales, which would be a pretty big jump. That's about 15 percent from where we were last year. I'm 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 all in on that. I know Realtor.com is on the lower end. They're saying four million. I I tend to in our market, I see more homes coming to the market because there's so there's so many people that are just like in this like wait and see mode, and they've been holding back. But at some point, you gotta like do something or not. And when rates come down like they have, I mean, we saw six and a quarter last week. That's going to get a lot of people off the fence. And the more that rates come down, then the more likely that you're going to see some sellers come to the market because most sellers have to go buy a home. So I see that as number one. And then secondly, I think people are a little more sure going into the economy now. Like there's not that uncertainty of what's going to go on. Now the Fed's in a rate cutting mode instead of a rate hiking mode. That's going to lead to some more confidence in making real estate decisions. So I see more homes selling number one, but I see the number of agents dropping because there's way too many real estate agents right now. How do you guys feel about this? In 2012, there was a million agents flat. Today, we're at almost 1.6 million, 11 years later, basically. So seeing all those extra people, and there's not as many homes transacting, and when you have organizations like ours where – you're bringing in people and you're taking doing a lion's share of the business. I think that the people that get squeezed out are like those dabblers, those hobbyists that are doing, oh, I'm going to do two deals a year. I'm going to work part time. I'm going to do something else. Like this is a side hustle. I got bad news for people who think that real estate's a side hustle. You are absolutely 100% wrong. It requires all of your attention. And that's what your clients deserve. And clients and consumers are much more in the know now. And I think the commission lawsuit had a lot to do with this because now they're thinking like, what is this agent going to actually do for me? How are they going to help me with the property? And these questions weren't getting asked the past couple of years when the number kept rising and rising. So I see and real estate renewal season, it's 531, May 31st. That's when everyone renews their license. People are going to say, yeah, maybe I'm going to save 100 bucks this year and not renew my license. Or the NAR due, you were talking about NAR dues a couple of weeks ago, right? Like, it, And it's people are going to not pay these bills. I wouldn't be surprised if we see maybe 100 to 200,000 agents drop out of the business over the next 12 months, which is great news for hustlers like us. So I look at that as a positive thing. Same thing with the uh, loan officers, I would say, too. Uh, yes. They've had it even worse this year. And some of those people relied on easy refi business instead of going out and learning how to like help people. So I, I, I tend to agree with you. And, I mean, how many bad loan officers have you guys run into? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, as many. Knock on wood, I haven't, uh, I haven't really. Just wait. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It's yeah. when you can't get them on the phone, when they don't, you know, they don't respond to your emails, like when they have no idea what's going on. You And there's many people within the organization that they're passing you around to. That, that's it's problem. a nightmare. Well, and you, Wells Fargo shut down their mortgage arm. I mean, they're they're because they're, they're they, and they were one of the biggest defenders. They were because they would. Oh, you got to talk to Joe over here. And then he's got to talk to Bill in this department. And Bill's only in on Tuesdays and Thursdays for 17 minutes. And like it would be. Yeah, he's part. He's a part time part timer. It, it was like nuts. Like, I mean, and and you know, I think one of the reasons. I mean, one of the things that actually, you know, we're pretty good at like saying like, here's who the great lenders are to work with. It's really when the buyer has like their own person or their friend. Like, it's. I mean, because we're pretty adamant 
and are, I mean, this is one of the it's like here's guys that are and gals you want to use because I look at lenders like offensive linemen, like you never want to hear about them. Like when they're talking about the offensive linemen, the quarterback just fumbled the ball. You know what I mean? So um, I think that's a, that's a great point, Anthony. That, that that is really good on your part. Um, I just don't. I mean, and the the thing about this is, and I want to get your reaction to this, and then we'll take a quick break and we'll come back and talk all about Anthony here. Is that when there's more homes and there's more home selling, and the 4.7, that really means like 9.4 sides. So that's, that's the amount of available business. And there's less agents. Are you going to see a lot of people? Like, how do you see that playing out? Like, are you anticipating a big jump in your business this year, Stacey and Sarah and Anthony? Like, what I mean, we, I know we've done business planning, but based on what the market's doing, what are you personally forecasting for yourself? Because I just see so much opportunity out in the market right now. Yeah, I have to agree. There's there's a lot of opportunity, but it really depends on how much work you want to put into it, yeah. because I think it's co- it correlates. You know, what you put into your business is what you're going to get back. Um, and I think that in the past couple of years, a lot of agents got into the business because it was easy pickings. You know what I mean? Everybody's like, oh, I'm a real estate agent. I'm going to sell, you know, close a couple of homes and it's going to be great. But when it really comes down to it and you have to actually go find some leads or like figure out where your next deal is coming from. This is the part that they don't want to do. And they don't, a lot of agents don't like talking to people. Like you can't even get another agent on the phone. Sometimes they work by just text message only and they'll never pick up the phone. They don't answer their email. So how are they going to service a client? Like you have to be able to communicate with your clients. This is the biggest financial decision that they're making in their life for the most part, you know, whether they're buying or selling. So um, I think that weeding out some of those part timers or some of those other agents, it's only going to be very positive for the whole market in general. Yeah, I mean, I would I would agree with all of that. I also think, you know, even if, you know, a decent amount of agents uh, don't renew or kind of, you know, drop drop real estate and even if more home sales occur, it's not going to be like you're just, you know, waiting in clients <laughs> like you still have to do all of the things to get them um it's not like we're in like some small town where like we're the only real estate agent and everybody comes to us you know um there's you it's have to small town, there wouldn't be enough business. Right, right right so it's um i think you just still have to keep doing all of the same things and hopefully like, you know that's great if then more business gets generated because there's more people out um of the field and and more transactions are going through but um even in markets where less transactions are occurring, they're still happening. It's who's fighting to get them. Well, and Sarah, you look at your business this year. You did a lot more business this year than you did last year, even though we're in a declining market, right? Anthony, you did the same thing. Um, and so these are examples of people actually doing it. And what I'm clear on is that consumers, are they're, they're so much more aware now than they were 18 months ago of what it actually means to be like a trusted professional or someone that you can guide you through the process. So, um, and and consumers have higher standards than they did 18 months ago right i mean are you guys feeling this they should you know i like you know ask questions i think it's important for consumers to ask questions know who you're working with you know google them see if they have reviews um find out you know i i think that if you're an agent and you're not working on your skills, you're not working to improve yourself, <laughs> then that's really bad. I mean, any, anybody in any business, that's what you're constantly doing, right? That's why we have continuing education. But if you're not working to improve yourself uh, in all aspects of your business, then you're just doing a disservice, not only to yourself, but to potential clients, too. Right. Clients who trust that you know what you're doing. Yeah. Great point. point. If you're not, not getting, getting better, better, you're probably, probably having, having your skills grow. That's well, you it's if you're you never nothing ever stays in the middle, right? Nothing ever stays, nothing stays the same. constant. It's either getting better, or it's getting worse. That's it. <laughs> then nothing's easy. And it's not easy. It's not easy. This job is, is extremely, extremely time consuming and 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 difficult. I mean, it is. I mean, that's just like a lot of the you know the younger generation are texting instead of just picking up the phone, getting it. You know, instead of taking five minutes to write a text. Get on the phone. And you talk for two minutes. I'm old school, and I know Tom is. And I yeah. well, it, it, but think of it. You can't get tonality in a text message. You don't get like they can't hear if you're smiling or not, right? And sometimes it takes a long time to type out this stuff unless you're using Chat GPT, and then you sound like a robot, which probably isn't good anyway in these high emotional decisions. So 
Yeah. And I mean, I feel like for every text that gets sent out, like you could read it or interpret it many different ways, you know? So like, no, I'm such a fan of just like getting on the phone. And then, and as you build, that also helps you build the relationship with the agent on the other side. The agent on the other side is not your enemy. You want them to be like, your goals are to get everything to settlement um, in a way where both parties are happy. And um, it only helps to like, how good of a relationship can you build with somebody through text? Right, right. And I know, that, you know, not to beat up on the younger generation, <laughs> but we, oh, there's older people to do this. There's too. older people, too. But it's it's there's some very difficult conversations that we have to have in this business. Right. And it's, it's very uncomfortable at times and you're delivering bad news. Uh, so it's not always pretty. You're not always just opening these luxury doors. It, it doesn't work that way. So I think for people who don't know how to convey bad news and try to help problem solve, because this is the biggest thing we do is we solve problems, right? Um, I, that's a big issue. And some people just don't have the social skills to do it. Right. That's huge. I mean, that's just, this is, I've talked more in my life than I ever have doing this job. Absolutely. Well, it's not a talk to a lot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> all right. So we got all our predictions here. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about Anthony Capadano. This guy has been kicking butt on our team. We are super grateful to have him. And he showed up dressed like a pro today. I mean, I would hire this guy on the spot with this outfit. You look really good. He hates when I do this stuff. So we'll be right back on Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM. You shouldn't have to deal with all the red tape when getting your mortgage from a big or online bank. At Mortgage America, we have access to big bank money, but with the personalized and detailed service of a local bank. We are here in your community and ready to serve with fast settlements, low down payment options, and first-time homebuyer programs. Pre-approval is free, no costs or commitments. For more information, visit our website at mymortgageamerica.com or give us a call at 610-439-8000. Have you considered a career in real estate? Do you want control over your income? Whether you have a license or not, call us today at 610-692-6976 or visit TomTool.com. Join our team, the Tom Tool Sales Group at REMAX Mainline. I'm Tom Tool of the Tom Tool Sales Group at REMAX Mainline. If you're thinking of becoming a real estate agent in the greater Philly area, I have a special offer for you. Our team did $165 million of volume in 2021, making us the number one REMAX team in Pennsylvania and a top 1% team nationally. Our agents love us because we offer them a successful career, a great life, and an unbeatable culture. Agents who've been with us for at least a year average 30-plus sales. Even our brand-new agents average 17 to 24 sales a year. We offer proven systems and expert training. We help you set more appointments and sell more houses. Now here's the offer. If you don't have a real estate license yet, we offer real estate scholarships so you can get one for free. Check it out at realestatescholarshipprogram.com or visit the Tom Tool sales group at Remax Mainline at tomtool.com. That's Tom Tool with an E dot com. Get more out of your real estate career and remember the real estate golden rule. You always get more when you work with Tom Tool. When you're getting a mortgage, you shouldn't have to sacrifice great service just to get a great rate. At Mortgage America, we've been lending with this philosophy for over 35 years. We have access to great low rates without the complications and delays of big or online banks. We're a local Pennsylvania lender with loan officers that you can actually meet. As PHFA's number one lender, we specialize in all residential mortgage programs, including first-time buyer programs and low down payment options. For your free pre-approval, call us at 610-439-8000 or apply online at mymortgageamerica.com. We're going to talk about Anthony's ascension in the business. This guy is so impressive. He's a hard worker. He helps people. And we're going to go over all that. So if you like what you hear, make sure to subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications. So Anthony, first off, just thank you for being you. And we're really grateful to have you part of our team. Tell everyone a little bit about yourself. What'd you do before real estate? You know, what, what, you know all, all, the whole background. So previous to uh, law enforcement, or uh, so I was in law enforcement for 17 years. Um, you know, I, that's what I wanted to get into. And um, I, I graduated Westchester with a criminal justice degree, which was kind of stupid at the time. I should have just got like a business degree or whatever. Yeah, so I uh, didn't make it in the Secret Service. They couldn't tell me why. So basically the recruiter was saying, you know, well, why don't you... Uh, you know, apply to like state police and local police. So that's what I did. And then I put myself through the uh, police academy and 
I worked uh, part so which which is um, going on in like Delaware County. There's a lot of part time. There's a lot of part time departments, smaller departments, and there's a lot of full time ones. But uh, I just applied everywhere. I landed a job at Upper Darby. I was there for 16 years, and um, you know, obviously, you you look at the news and you see you see different things out there. Times are changing, and uh, I'm getting older. I have a you know a family and a son, and and I I was always interested in real estate like my whole life. I in the past I flipped a couple of houses. I have a couple of rentals now. Um, I bought and sold uh, rentals that I had, and uh, I was like, you know what? Let me just do this for my business, this, my, my side hustle. And then, then I got into, uh, just doing it full time. And I, I think a hundred percent, you can't do this job part time. You can't, you got to put a hundred percent. this. Yeah. You can't, you can't do it. I tried to do it, uh, briefly and I just, I, I, there's no way, there's no way the time and the, uh, the hours you put in the conversations and stuff like that. And, you know, it's, so now I'm home all the time. I'm home more. And I found this place, and it's only five minutes from my house. And it, I got a great, I got a great team leader. I got great agents that work with us, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm available all the time. <laughs> I'm available all the time. I work fast. I, I move fast. And my wife kind of is like, you know, you're stumbling on, you know, you're you're worried about this. And I'm like, well, how come he doesn't sign this paper? You know, I, I talk about my client. Like I sent it to him two hours ago. How come they didn't sign it? I, and they have copies of this with the with the buyer's guide, so you know they they should be familiar with the uh, forms and stuff like that. And I'm just like I'm ready to rock and roll all the time. That's just the, that's just what I'm doing. I'm available. Uh, I, I take advantage of the training that we have here, and um, I move fast. And I, I want to help people out, and I don't want to make them ever making a wrong decisions or anything like that. Yeah, Stace, but you say, does your husband know about most of your yes. transactions? Oh, he gosh, hears me too. talk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. And, like, you know, sure. in Dot Loop, you can hear it, like, yeah. ding, ding. I'm like, like oh, oh, people are signing. Right. People are signing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm I think his signature came and in. He like, knows what the noise is, too. And he's like, yeah. oh, somebody's signing. Like, sweet. Yeah. But, yes. But, Anthony, I think credit to you because you're such a personable person. Yeah. You know, I mean, you you are comfortable with yourself. So you And the way you approach people, it's awesome. So, it's not a big surprise that you're doing so well in this business. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm a people person. Like, I mean, it's just, that's why I got into law enforcement, and, and like, I go out of my way for other people, and I'll do some, I don't do anything for myself, basically. Um, you know, I used to be like real big into weightlifting and 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 all kinds of different like competitions back when I was younger. Now, I, as long as I'm showered, cut hair, she, you know, everything's trimmed up and looking, looking okay. It's all I care about. Like now I'm just like, I put everybody else first. I do. I, I really do. I mean, you know, especially my son. That's, that's all. That's, you know, every day. His son is a, uh, he, he, he's a, he's a cool kid. He's uh, he was, he was giving me a little uh, crap at the uh, Linville pie event, which I appreciated. So he is, and he's so fascinated with Tom's, uh, Tom's, uh, you know, videos and, and, yeah. and all that stuff. So. Uh, he's like, you know, that's that generation. They're like, they're gods. Everybody that's on social media or any, you know, YouTube and all that stuff, they're gods to these little kids. So, well, I mean, he's got to find somebody else. I mean, there's better role models than me. Um, so, what I th- I find interesting is the law enforcement background because I don't think this job's that different than law enforcement fundamentally. Obviously, you're putting your life on the line. There's a lot of different. I'm not talking about that, but you're problem solving and dealing with all kinds of people, like all kinds of people. And I don't think real estate agents get that, like, you're not going to always get along with the person that you're helping, or they may not see things the same way you do. So how have you started to channel that experience? Has that, has that helped you l- learn how to kind of deal with this job? Because you're dealing with emotional decisions. People are stressed out because they're buying or selling a house. Like, this is one of the most stressful things out there. And they probably haven't done this before. And I think that's that's very similar to police work in a lot of ways. I know I've talked to you about this off the show, do you think that's helping you right now? Absolutely. I mean, I dealt with so many, uh, where I used to work, I dealt with so many different cultures and, and backgrounds and religions and stuff like that. So absolutely. I mean, you, you know, um, it's just, it's like the simple little things. If you, if I go to a client's house and you know, they're from Asia, you know, I always automatically just take my shoes off and, you know, I, I just know that because I knew that from going in, uh, going into people's houses, they had a complaint or a call a report or anything like that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm always the I, 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 the compromiser, I guess. Uh, I learned the problem solved or and diffuse a situation and all that. And um, I mean, every single day uh, in law enforcement, I was just constantly just talking to people. You know, I just 
just talking to people, business owners. Uh, I mean, I learned, and I'm fascinated with other cultures and religions and, and uh, especially foods, because I'm a big eater. Uh, there's nothing out there. You don't look that way. I mean, uh, that's good. Probably because I move around, I'm burning everything off. But uh, yeah, like, I, I mean, I love food. I love hearing about like different kind of, uh, like my last client, he was from, he was from China and, and uh, he doesn't put, they don't um, drink cold water. They drink room temperature water. I think Nick, yeah, Nick, Nick experienced that also because when he was taking the pictures over there, um, they, they offered him, you know, uh, room temperature water. And the reason behind it is because our, our gut, our body temperature is a certain temperature. And then when you're dumping like a colder substance into your body, it kind of throws off your, your, your main immune system uh, area, which is in your gut. So, uh, you, you know, like learning stuff like that, it's just, it's kind of like, wow, you know, I'm just an open-minded guy. I just, you know, I love hearing stuff like that. Uh, sometimes it could get me in some, some, uh, you know, s situations where I'm like, man, I just really wasted a lot of time <laughs> just talking to somebody or, and getting to know, but that's just the way I am. I just never wouldn't meet these people other than doing these, uh, you know, being the real estate agent and, uh, or helping them out in any kind of way. Do you think that because of your background, um, also, you're able to maybe read people a little bit better or pick up on, I don't know, body language. Like, has that like, is that like helpful or is that something that comes into play at all? Is that? Yes. Um, you know, like even like, oh, uh, and, you know, everybody's different. I mean, we're all chemically uh, made up and biologically made up differently. Um, even if like, you know, you go into it like, man, I just dumped a ton of information on them. I helped to answer questions. But then you like get like their body language is like different. And I'm like. What did they like? You know, what did I do wrong? What did I say wrong? And I don't think I did anything wrong. But like, I noticed that right away. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, that's a great point. So, last question, and we got to wrap. Um, obviously, you've had a ton of success. You've done all the work. You've got the right personality for this. What if there's someone out there that maybe is like feeling like they're they're not in the right environment, or that they don't know if they can even succeed at this job? And like, what advice would you have for them? Because I think it's really hard changing careers like you did. I, I I've only done one thing my entire life, and I've had maybe changes in my role, but everyone else here has changed careers. I think that's really challenging. So what advice do you have for people that are thinking about doing that or maybe aren't aren't seeing the success that they want? Because you've been such a killer since you walked in the door in the biggest positive way and, and with your eye on the prize, a goal-oriented, and just helping people. What advice do you have for people that want to have that same kind of success? Um, it's not easy. This, uh, the, 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 it's not easy. The, the advice, it's not easy, guys. You're screwed. They're, they're not, uh, it's just I'm kidding. You gotta you gotta go into it like knowing that you gotta put you gotta put a lot of time into it. You gotta put a lot of research. You gotta put um you, you gotta talk to different people. You gotta yeah, you know what? Me knowing a lot about houses and being homeowners and born and sold and, and all this stuff. I think that helped me also. And then like I do have like a little plumbing background also. I have friends in trades. Um uh, you know, I you know, helped build uh, my buddy was a general contractor. He, build additions and I built from the ground up with them and helped them out and I watched all that stuff. So I, I know what to look for also in houses and I have a lot of connections in, in those, those kind of ways. So, um, I just think, you know, somebody getting into this business, communication is key. Talk, pick up the phone, pick up the phone, pick up the phone, pick up the phone, call, call the other agents, get all the information you possibly can. Um, and, uh, you, you just be available. And, uh, and then also the, uh, you know, dealing with listing agents and stuff. Fill out the feedback forms. Uh, fill fill it out. Ask a question. You know. Let, you know. Hey, shoot him a text. Hey, you got you got a couple minutes to talk, and just to, and just you know ask your questions and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, just make you know we're all in this together. We're all out there to make a living and help each other out. Love it. Well said, Anthony. We could not appreciate you more. Grateful to have you. That's it for this week's episode. Last show of the year. That's it. We're done. We'll see you in 2024. You want to follow Sarah? She's at Ty underscore Ty Time. Anthony, what's your Instagram handle so people can follow you? Acappy34. Acappy34. You follow Anthony there. You can follow Stacy at the number two Mitchco. You can follow me at TomTool3RD. We're streaming live every week. We'll see you next uh, next next year. I hate when people say that, but I just did. That's it for this year's episode of Tool Time. That's it for this week's. Can you edit this? That's it for this week's episode of Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM.